your brides just like this. Now, you guys are probably thinking like, <laughs> you know, Jason, what do you want me to do? Like, go up to some girl in the cafeteria who I like, take my belt off, say, honey, look, I love you, you know, quack, quack, quack. And she'd probably get freaked out, so I wouldn't go there. But how is a guy supposed to sacrifice himself for a girl? Well, to be honest, the reason, honestly, why I always confuse love with lust in high school is because the influence in my life back then of the pornography. And the thing is, is that when the teenage girls find out the teenage guys struggle with the pornography, it's not that the girls are all mad at us. They just feel sorry for us that we can't relate to women in a more interesting way. Because as a guy, the pornography as a guy is the perfect way for a guy to shoot his future marriage in the head. Because it trains me that girls, their things be used for my kicks. She's got to be constantly sexually available, physically flawless, and when you get done bored lusting after, you go to the next fantasy, and it's no big deal at all, because you can judge the value of a woman by how much lust she generates in me. And we would laugh it off. And I'm sure there's some guys in the audience and in their heads right now, they're thinking, dude, whatever, I got some porn on the internet, and I got some Maxim magazine, it's not a problem, I'm not getting anyone pregnant. And while he laughingly tries to think it's not a problem, but almost desperately try to convince himself, what happens to a young guy is he gets emasculated. Emasculation means that when a young man is robbed of the ability to be masculine. And pornography flips that backwards, so we men learn to sacrifice and empty the girls for the sake of ourselves, and we miss the whole point of manhood. And in high school, we would totally laugh it off. We're like, dude, who cares? I'm not getting anyone pregnant. It's all good. It's not, I'm not killing it. I'm not hurting anyone. We have no clue what we were looking at. You know, Pamela Anderson, the big supermodel for, uh, you know, out in Los Angeles, you know when she first posed in the nude for Playboy? The limo drove her to the pornographic studios. They did all her makeup up. She disrobed. Then she started crying sobbing, uncontrollably crying for two hours straight. She finally pulled herself together, they redid the makeup around her eyes, and they took the nude photos. That when you're looking at porn, you're not looking at just some naked body, you're looking at the corpse of a woman's heart. But we would laugh it off, saying, dude, I'm not hurting anyone. We didn't realize how much we're hurting ourselves. You know, Maxim Magazine, it's a new smutty magazine they have for guys. You know, Maxim Magazine has paid computer companies up to 20,000 bucks a pop to generate fake cover models. I'm not saying she's airbrushed. Her legs are fake, her face is fake, her breast is fake. The whole bot woman is completely computer generated. So we as guys are trained to expect our wives to live up to this impossibly perfect fantasy. And where does this leave our brides one day? I had a friend in college who had a porn, and, and he basically assumed, dude, who cares? I, I, I'll throw the porn away when I get married. I'm getting married in a few months. Then you can have sex whenever you want, and it's all good. And I went to his wedding, beautiful wedding, and the guy was divorced in three months. All that he did was transfer the fantasies of lust from the porn onto his bride, and the marriage is done as soon as it began. So if you think you're gonna get married as a guy and you have the porn, ask yourself one question. Ask yourself, dude, is my bride's body, is it worth waiting to see? <laughs> or is she frankly not even worth waiting to see? Because if I can trash the porn tonight, I'm training myself in faithfulness before I ever even meet that girl. And you as a guy could imagine, imagine if your future wife is at home from school right now. She's on the computer. She gets an email to invite her to visit some pornographic website of guys. I would imagine you would pray that she would have the strength just to delete it. Imagine you're carrying your wife into the honeymoon suite for your wedding night, and she's got her arms locked around your neck. And she says, honey, I'm so excited about tonight. And you're like, me too, me too, me too, me too. Walking her in there, and she says, honey, to get ready for you tonight, and you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. She says, honey, to get ready for you tonight, she says, I've been looking at thousands of pages of naked men on the internet. <laughs> You'd be like, <laughs> you know, they go, yeah, babe, you know, maybe we eat it all life, but you, don't you sort of have to wait with your eyes. And that's what it comes down to. If I can't say no to sex, what's my yes even worth? But I don't think that guys are the problem. I think high school guys are the solution to the entire problem, and I have the research to back me up. They just finished a study of how many high school students are having sex in America, and what they found is this. High school girls, in the last 10 years, your sexual activity rates in, in, in America have gone down about 1%. So now 54% of high school girls are virgins. What about high school guys? High school guys in America, over the last 10 years, sexual activity rates have gone down 20%. So now the majority of high school guys and high school girls in America are virgins. It's starting to sweep the country. 
Over in Atlanta recently, 40,000 high school students met, signed commitment cards to save themselves from marriage regardless of what they had done in the past. To sign a commitment of virginity or starting over, which is gorgeous, they stacked them up on the turf where the Falcons play and hit the roof of the dome. 40,000 commitments of real love. And we're not making up. I saw us at the airport the other day in Newsweek magazine, the new virginity. It's sweeping the country because we want this better kind of love. And to prove to you we all deserve it, having come with me from San Diego is my fiance, Cristalina. So please give her a warm welcome. Come on up, hon. Good morning, everyone. OK, now, I'm coming from a completely different angle than Jason here. When I was about a sophomore in high school, I had my first serious relationship. And after a while of dating, we thought we were in love and everything was great. And slowly, we started to get very physical. And slowly, the pressure started to set into the relationship. And he said, well, girl, if you really love me, if you truly love me, you'd prove it to me. You'd show me just how much you love me. So I needed advice. So I went to my girlfriends and I said, well, he kind of wants to do this with me, and he wants to do that. And they said, well, <laughs> if you aren't doing this with him, and if you aren't doing that with him, then I mean, well, what's wrong with you? Everybody's doing it. You love him, right? And I thought, well, yeah, I love him. They said, well, then what's the problem? So at the age of 15, I lost my virginity, thinking it was going to cause this huge, great emotional bond between us. We are going to be on cloud nine and so in love. And in all actuality, it eventually destroyed any love in the relationship and all respect was just thrown out the window. Because if I couldn't even respect my own body, how was he supposed to respect it? And after a while of dating, it seemed like he didn't want to spend time with me anymore. He was basically spending the time with my body. Now when a girl is being used, she knows it. She knows it in the depths of her heart she may deny it, she may ignore it, but she knows it, and I knew it. And after a while, we were constantly fighting, he was cheating on me, and we broke up and went our separate ways. Now, I will never forget the day when he walked away from me for the very last time. And as he walked away from me, all I could think about was that guy's taking something with him that never belonged to him in the first place. But I can't get it back, right? What's the point? It's already gone. So there I was in the cafeteria talking with my girlfriends. And I came to this conclusion, OK, if a guy can date me for about mm, six months without sleeping with me, then he must love me. Then I'll sleep with him. And I think now six months, six months is the price that I put on my body. If he gives me just a little bit of that time and just a little bit of that attention, that's the definition of love. And I carried this mentality all through high school. He was the first guy that I slept with, but he wasn't the last because it starts a vicious cycle. And after a while, I was pretty deep into it. Now, I'm not standing up here pointing my finger at you guys, saying, you guys, you're the problem. No. I happen to believe that you guys will be as much of a gentleman as we ladies require. Now, I wasn't acting like a lady back then, nor dressing like a lady back then. Therefore, they didn't feel the need to rise up and act like a gentleman around me. And what seems to happen sometimes is that girls will give guys sex for the sake of getting the love from them. And guys will give girls the love for the sake of getting the sex from the girls. And it can go both ways. Now, with this lifestyle, I got into the partying, I got into the drinking, I got into the clubbing. You name it, I was into it. And granted, at the time, yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. It was very attractive. And I know what that's like. But I also know what it's like to wake up the next day when that party's over, when those friends are gone, and when I was there by myself. And I remember waking up thinking, I can't believe I did that last night. I hope I don't have to see his face in the hallway at school on Monday. What